conference um, and sort of working and engaging and advising with students and colleagues in a different way. So uh, excited to be here. And I'd like to introduce my two colleagues who will tell you a little bit about themselves. Um, I'll start with Scott. If, uh, Scott, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Scott Belzer, uh, and I am the STEM Academy Lead Advisor for Academic Advisement at Queensborough Community College. So I've been working at Queensborough for the last 11 years. When I first came to Queensborough in 2009, I was actually hired as the freshman coordinator for the STEM Academy. So I've always been affiliated in my, I guess my forte and my expertise has always been in STEM uh, curriculums. However, as Mike mentioned, all of the, all of the advisement now is, uh, you know, generalized. We're all generalists. We all know all the areas. We brought, we're all well versed in all the curriculums. So I do know advisement very well across the board and all the degree programs uh, and to help in helping our students. So, and recently, you know, I've been kind of like the liaison of the department as far as doing a lot of work with social media and Instagram, which we'll tell you about and how we're promoting our department and encouraging students to connect with our department and advisement with the use of social media and other support services. So we're gonna get into that, but that's a little bit about me and my, uh, and my history at Queensborough Community College. Thanks, Scott. Okay. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Angela May. I'm uh, in the Office of Marketing and Communications at Queensboro. Um, and I handle a lot of our student communications. So I manage our, our um, CRM system for our student email, our text messaging platforms. Um, social media specific to um, currently enrolled students, student specific initiatives. Um, and I get to work hand in hand um, most days with our um, team in student affairs. So Mike and Scott um, and uh, the rest of enrollment management. And it's, it's really great to have that relationship with them. So that's a little bit about me. Thank you so much, Angelica. So we'll move on and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what to expect today. Um, I'll give you a little bit more about the background and sort of the need uh, for us to be innovative, um, not just because of the pandemic necessarily, but um, a little bit because of our advising model in Queensboro and, um, and a need to innovate and engage students in different ways. Uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about when we're referring to Instagram about the pre-pandemic and post-pandemic uh, sort of approach, uh, because it did start a little bit before we did start working remotely. Um, a little bit about operationalizing it, how we've done that, but also tips if you are interested to operationalize it on your campus. Some highlights and of course challenges, right? With technology, uh, there are challenges. And then some data assessment feedback that we've gotten that you know, we are trying to uh, build upon and some next steps. Definitely wanna leave a little time at the end for questions or even shared experiences. You know, if you're utilizing any other forms of social media or Instagram and how that's worked for you on campus. Um, you know, we, we hear a lot about meeting the students where they are. And one of the things that is important is what we used to do on campus, I'll tell you about that in a little bit, um, was trying to get out on campus and meet the students where they are walking around. And now with the pandemic, it's, you know, whether it was quarantine last year or, you know, being home and learning online, um, we know that they're on their phones, on social media. And so we're trying to Get, get out and engage with them as much as possible um, and get the word out about advising. That right there is Scott and our one of our Bursar colleagues, Lena, that is a stat from one of the sessions from about two, two months ago, um, you know, over 600 views and growing strong, but uh, we were able to have the Bursar answer a lot of Q and A's. You know, we all know that that's very common in advising, right? We hear about billing and financial aid questions and we need to pass students off to get those an answers sometimes. Um, and on campus, that's a very different scene. Uh, but uh, remotely, we know that there are challenges where students can sort of get lost in a virtual world or maybe the handoff, the resources aren't set up to hand off the students so easily. So um, we're able to host a lot of these to get the answers out to students as best as possible. So a need to engage differently. So a little bit about the advising model. So when I started at Queensboro, it was just about a little over two years ago, a little before that, advising uh, was required for certain populations. I know this is a best practice, right? Charlie Nunn and Hikata and, you know, a lot of the literature, um, advising is a required experience, uh, especially for new students and, you know, first semester students is very important. Uh, but our setup, you know, the way it has worked uh, with administration, enrollment management, all of the students who are coming in do meet with an advisor, of course, to, you know, plan out their courses, schedules, learn about the programs. 
Um, but once you are here, after you begin your first semester, it, in our program in the academies, uh, students are not required to, to meet with us, right? And because of that, we need to get our word out to let them know how important it is to see an advisor, to engage with the advising office, to plan out their schedule and their time at Queensborough. Um, and so we've had to be creative um, and to really get out there and, and get the word out and try and increase the, the sort of population of students who are coming to visit us and get the guidance uh, that they need. A little note about if you have questions about how our uh, numbers are, we have about 7,000 students that we, we help and advise in the, in the academies. Um, our caseloads fluctuate every semester, roughly between 400, 425, sometimes 450 to one. Um, I've heard from other colleagues on some campuses that may be high and some that actually may be low. So um, I know we're all dealing with different uh, cohorts and caseloads of students, uh, but that's sort of what we are looking at on our campus. Um, and, you know, this all started with our innovative approach, right? We had to figure out, and especially when I first started, you know, how else do we get out to students, get the word out, maybe meet them where they are, as I said. We started some on-the-spot advising pre-pandemic, which was great, and we have an image on the last slide with that, where we would go out, meet with the students, we would see them roaming the, you know, the campus, and, you know, the campus is large and beautiful, you know, especially in the spring and some, you know, closer to in the fall, and we would meet them, set up tables outside if the weather was nice. If not, we would perhaps meet them in the lobby of one of the larger buildings um, and advise right on the spot. Sometimes we would be out there for a few hours and you know advise 50 to 75 students. It was brief, it was fast, but it was also a way to catch them, uh, help them out, especially towards the end of the semester to set them up for the next semester. Um, while we started doing that, we started promoting Instagram and following students, uh, students following us on, on our social media to really get the word out. We, we wanted to use that as one of the prime, primary ways that we could also get students, aside from texting and emailing, uh, to engage with us. And we were one of the first offices and probably are still the, the main office to utilize social media and, and work so closely with Angelica, like she'll, she'll uh, discuss, um, with, uh, with marketing to really get ourselves out there. Um, we of course had to adapt, right? As we all did, and I think a lot of this conference is about that. You know, we created remote walk-in services uh, in, on, on Blackboard Collaborate as we went into the pandemic. Uh, we still utilize that. We, we do it during high peak times. You know, for example, in the month of January, so close to 1,000 students um, as a walk-in uh, with advisors waiting in breakout rooms, but it's a very intense service. Um, we operate obviously by appointment as well, um, but we wanted to expand the use of social media and say, because students, we felt as if our students were just out there. They weren't on campus anymore. We didn't have any touch points to visually see them, work with them, uh, talk with them. And so we wanted to be able to put ourselves out there. And so we started to expand. Uh, the Instagram and and Angelica will sort of explain a little bit more now in detail about that. Yeah, thanks, Mike. So again, just to give you guys a little bit of background and some context when we're talking about this, um, exactly as Mike, uh, you know, mentioned a few times, we really this started out of the need to meet students where we are. Um, EAB has some articles about this. There, there's, there's, uh, you know, definitely the idea that Instagram is really one of the best platforms to be connecting with college students on. So um, pre-pandemic, we knew we wanted to use this specific platform. Um, one way that our marketing team and, and my department really um, were talking about possibly, you know, how do we use Instagram differently? We hadn't used live really, I, I, I don't think ever. Um, so we took that to our operations meetings where Mike and Scott and a few other of our team members are, and we started to talk about it. You know, how could we use this? Um, and of course, we kept saying we need to meet students where we are, we need to meet students where we are. So uh, we decided we're going to pilot a program where we're working with a small group of advisors to answer commonly asked Q&A type questions. You know, how do I make an advisement appointment? When does registration open? Uh, really just geared at um, enrollment and registration for continuing students specifically. So um, that's how this kind of started. We, I did a lot of research. Um, I kind of put together a one-sheeter. I met with Mike, I met with Scott. 
um, and a couple of other advisors to just try to get everyone on the same page and say, okay, this is how you use Instagram. Um, this is the direction we need to be going in. Um, and everyone was kind of just excited and ready to embark on this journey, essentially. Um, we started very small, a small group um, in our SUL, um, in a room that uh, Gisela, our director of student activities, was able to kind of um, get us uh, an hour in. Um, and then we just did it. Uh, we, we use our cell phones. The first time we did this, it was using my iPhone. Um, I do have access to our QCC Instagram page. So that's, you know, we're hosting right from our channel. Um, and it was great. We learned a lot. We uh, got comfortable with the technology. Um, and then the next day we did something that's called the postmortem. And it's where you just kind of discuss the campaign, the project itself, what worked, what didn't work, where do we need to go? Um, and then out of that grew um, a little bit of a larger group. Um, so a few more people included, you know, student ambassador, a professor, um, and we started hosting them. We got more buy-in from our VPs. We started hosting them in um, our vice president of student affairs office. Now it was a little more branded. We'd have our um, step and repeat up. We'd have a round table. Scott and whoever else was hosting the session would sit around a table. And then I would be um, kind of in the foreground with a tripod and in uh, our iPhone, um, just helping to moderate and we'd record and save. Um, and as we started to do that, more and people started to take you know, notice. Students were becoming um, kind of used to the idea that it, we would be hosting these sessions from time to time. Um, and I'm just gonna apologize, my dog will not stop barking. So if you hear him, I'm sorry. Um, beauty of working from home. So from there, you know, that's kind of where we were going. We uh, nailed down a process and now post pandemic, you know, we were all just trying to figure out, well, what do we do with this? We had such a great, you know, um, turnout when we do this on campus and, and now we have to kind of pivot. Um, so, you know, Scott and I were talking a lot about what to do. Obviously we can't meet in person. Um, you know, I'm usually the one recording and moderating and, and they're the ones talking. So we thought it would be best um, that since Scott was so comfortable already from doing all the sessions that he would become kind of like the face of this campaign. So I worked with Scott to make sure he understood how to log into the QCC Instagram page, uh, how to go live, how to save a video, how to moderate a convert uh, a session. Um, and, you know, he's great at it. So from there, once he got a little more comfortable and started doing it, um, you know, other offices wanted to participate again. So now we pivoted and, and were able to do, um, create like a co-host account. So part of our process now is Scott usually hosts these sessions with a co-host. So um, and you'll see some uh, photos of that. Um, Mike mentioned uh, Lena co-hosted that, that image uh, that you saw in the slide before. So that's kind of where we are post pandemic. Scott is really, um, you know, we're planning these together and he's hosting it with a co-host. Um, and our students are, you know, do really love when we go live. We do get a lot of feedback and a lot of um, interaction. And the great thing of, uh, about this is we're able to answer a lot of the same questions multiple times that uh, we see a lot of students just have the same type of questions, those large general questions. So we're able to kind of answer them quickly um, and, uh, you know, just be a little uh, efficient. So that's kind of where we are now. So um, next slide, scaling it up. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the marketing side of things um, and how we market these sessions. So. Great, so um, I typically handle all the promotion. Um, so promotion includes an email from our CRM retain, text messaging um, and some social media coverage. So that's usually done um, a few days, a week out. Um, we tend not to do it more than a week because there's so much always going on and students are getting a ton of communication. So we try to keep um, ourselves uh, fresh in their mindset. 
Um, so we have an example of a, a text message, you know, QCC, all of our texts start this, this way, Instagram live session 414 at one o'clock, um, and we try to make it as concise as possible. Um, we do try to use Bitly, so we're able to track um, how many students are landing on the page and, and taking interest, so that is one of the mechanisms we use for assessment. Um, of course, uh, for anyone who's familiar with the CRM, if you use Retain on your campuses, you know you could also track links through the system uh, as well. So um, I would say those three things are, are probably our, our best marketing tools. Now, I think um, Scott is going to uh, talk about archiving. I think this was still your slide, I believe. Oh, no, it's still mine. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk about archiving. <laughs> so um, what we do is um, we, when Scott's done going live, he'll save all of the um, sessions to our IGTV. Um, so when you're going live, it's usually a longer session. Hours run anywhere from about 45 minutes to an hour. So you do need to save it to uh, IGTV. Um, and with doing so, students are able to rewatch the session. Not everyone is gonna be able to tune in live and that's perfectly okay. Um, what we're able to do is link back to the saved session. We send emails, um, post the session and just say, you know, are you, um, if you've missed uh, today's bursar and advisement uh, co-session, like here's the link, you can watch it whenever you want. And we find that students do, our numbers always grow, like whether it's 600 views, 800 views, they'll go back to it and watch it, you know, at a time that's convenient for them. Um, so right now we have eight Instagram live sessions currently archived on our IGTV, which is on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, um, I think it's about the third tab in the middle on top of our feed. It looks, um, you can kind of see it uh, on the slide. It looks like a little TV. So. And then uh, about a week after each session, we do a very informal um, kind of like assessment, um, just jotting down um, some analytics and, and saving it. And we'll talk about assessment um, later. I'll take that. That's me. All right. Now, so, thanks, Angelica. So like I said, we've been doing a great job as far as our expanding a number of viewers. We've come a long way from when we first started. So the number continues to grow. So currently we're at 4,805 followers on our Queensborough Instagram page and it's continued to grow. In fact, I think we're growing even more working in this remote environment uh, because you know, obviously people are now more on their phones now more than ever before, you know, since we're all remote working from home, you know, students have always been very well connected with Instagram, but I think now it's more than ever being in this virtual remote environment and technology coming more and more into play uh, during these times. Uh, so the, like, like was mentioned earlier, the original stakeholders for this project was uh, Angelica, myself, and, and Mike. So our Office of Ac Ac Academic Advisement has done a terrific job in collaborating with Mark and Angelica and marketing and getting the word out and promoting these, event, promoting these events as far as her getting the word out on, social, on, our, on our Queensboro social media page, on our QCC website, as far as really uh, letting the QCC community and the students aware of uh, all these Instagram live sessions that we're conducting uh, throughout the semester. And it's been successful and it's continuing to grow. Uh, so a lot of the sessions that we've done already have been with the majority of academic support services on campus. Uh, I've, hosted, I've hosted several with financial aid, uh, Bursar, student ambassadors. I think for the first time when the, when the fall semester first started, you know, in the past pre-pandemic, we had a uh, I think it was a freshman first orientation for new students. And obviously with being remote, unfortunately, you know, students weren't able to obviously come on campus to get that campus experience prior to starting the semester. And we didn't wanna take that away from them as far as every new student deserves some kind of orientation, you know, before they start. Uh, so, you know, after speaking with Mike and Angelica, you know, we decided we should really do something for the incoming new students to make them feel like they're, like, you know, make them feel connected that they're still part of this community, even though they're not going to be on campus. So when we, we did, we had uh, one of our student ambassadors um, join me and kind of just gave like, a, did the session to kind of like uh, give helpful tips and uh, for incoming students about starting, you know, like how to, uh, 
use their GCC Connect app, uh, you know, talk about, you know, the online classes, synchronous versus asynchronous, you know, how to be successful with remote learning, making sure that students had all their uh, tech tools in line, just really gave the students a, the best we can do really from being in a remote environment, a kind of a good welcoming prior, right before the for fall semester took place. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we also have had sessions with uh, the Transfer Resource Center, as well as the Office of Information Technology. So, and, you know, with this, like, you know, like my colleagues have mentioned that, you know, really things are really, uh, are starting to grow and the word has really been out as far as the, having a great reputation with these sessions and it's really spread and people are taking notice to this. And with the popularity increasing, other departments are now interested in getting involved that we haven't had a chance to do a live, to do an IG live with just yet, but we will, we will be doing it short, very soon. So such as uh, counseling and career services, career services have also expressed interest. And, you know, that's pretty much across the board, you know, major departments across student support services, pretty much everyone that I can think of uh, is listed there. So, you know, I'm looking forward to doing more with counseling and career services and even uh, future, more departments in the future, in the near future. Uh, so, you know, prior to the session, uh, each new person has provided guidelines for Instagram live sessions, like Angelica mentioned uh, a few days before we, be, we go on the live session, Angelica, myself, and whoever is presenting, will have like a, a chat, a meeting before, and kind of just go over bullet points and guidelines, what to kind of outline for the session, discuss expectations, making sure that the person knows how to log in the session, because when I'm like I said, I'm the host. I have to make sure I have to kind of uh, I have to get the person to join in. So they have to they have to the person needs to create an Instagram name. And what's been happening is the the people that are presenting are creating uh, kind of like a, a fake Instagram name. Like for example, uh, you know Jeremy underscore financially at a QCC because you know a lot of people you know obviously don't want to share and be on with their personal Instagram name. So Angelica emails. The presenter of the steps and how to create that username just to sign in for the live for live purposes and once that's created then i'm able to tag that person and that person is able to join in with me and that's how the sh session goes so we usually always meet with the presenter a few days before and you know make sure that they're comfortable make sure that they're you know uh all set to go before we you know go live and make sure that everything is kind of met so, okay. And obviously comes challenges <laughs> with the technology as far as, you know, uh, campus buying monitoring. So, you know, obviously we've done a great job as far as we, fortunately we've been blessed. We really haven't many challenges. This is going very smoothly, but you know, like we said, we can't always control technology. In that case, we always have to have a backup plan, right? And be prepared. So example, uh, you know, last month, this was recently, uh, and this is kind of like the only snag I think we really had, honestly, we've been very fortunate. Uh, we had a we had our uh, acad academic advisement uh, live session uh, last month and myself, and I was joined with one of my colleagues from the academic advisement department. We were speaking and about halfway through the session, uh, I noticed that the audio was going in and out. I couldn't hear her well. She couldn't hear me. I couldn't hear, couldn't hear her. So I'm just thinking that, okay, I, I sense a connection problem is happening right now. Uh, so unfortunately, we got booted out. Found out later on, I was calling and like, what's happening? What's going on? It's happening. She's like, yeah, I was watching and I got kicked out too. So we learned that this Instagram crashed, you know, for everyone that day, you know, like that happens sometimes, right? Like people panic when, you know, Facebook goes down, Instagram goes down. That happens from time to time. And that's what happened that day. So no need to worry. Uh, obviously, we had to cut the session short due to that due to due to that happening. But right when Instagram came back up, you know, Angelica, you know, went right into it and posted a story on the Queensboro web on the Instagram page saying, you know, sorry for the technical difficulties due to Instagram crashing. Uh, we weren't able to continue with the academic advisement live session, but we will reschedule and have a and have a make update for that, which we did, which was yesterday. And it went terrific. So we had our session yesterday. We finished it very strong. Uh, it's now posted on our QCC Instagram page, so students can view it that weren't able to view yesterday. So I mean, you know, that's that's the main thing. But uh, we always able to 
kind of regroup and, you know, let, let the students know, you know, if we were having technical difficulties, we were rescheduled and, and we know they are always looking at our Instagram page. So as soon as that message was uh, showing on, on the page, students were able to see that. And obviously the students who were joined in the first time all came back yesterday and were able to view the session live yesterday. Uh, ADA compliance, you know, we're actively trying to become ADA compliant as Angelica kind of touched upon this in the previous slides. All videos need to be closed captioned, including live videos that are saved to IGTV. And Instagram now has the, uh, the capability to kind of save videos with uh, audio, audio captioning. So, you know, I know she mentioned that uh, earlier. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a learning experience. We're learning as we go. You know, this ADA compliance is new for us too, uh, as, far as, uh, as far as with these videos, but, you know, we've, we've done a pretty good job. We didn't start doing it, but now, as far as moving forward now with all of our Instagram live videos, we're, you know, adhering to this now. Okay. So, you know, a little bit about expanding our efforts takes effort with the buy-in and the monitoring process. So when we, you know, obviously when we first started this, a lot of, you know, we're going to get people from different departments or not all across the board who might be a little bit apprehensive about you know, going live saying, well, I'm not sure if I want to see myself on video. I don't want everyone viewing me on video. There's gonna be a lot of viewers. I don't feel comfortable. Some people obviously are, you know, just not comfortable presenting in front of a large audience of people uh, that comes across the board or just confident using live technology. You know, like I said, I've always been pretty savvy with uh, Instagram and, you know, social media accounts. So I, you know, like I, I'm, so I've always been very comfortable, you know, using these kind of accounts, but obviously we have people that haven't been exposed to a lot of social media and aren't very, you know, and are, are still kind of new to this process. So uh, there are obviously some people, at least from our department that kind of just said, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure yet, but however, what we learned doing these sessions though, or at first someone might be apprehensive and then they do it and they get very comfortable. So, and so I think once people start doing the sessions, and they say, oh, that, you know, that wasn't so bad. I had actually enjoyed doing it. I remember when we were, we were trying to recruit and do a session for Transfer Resource Center, uh, the director said, you know, she wasn't very well worth with social media when we first met with her and she didn't feel that comfortable using so Instagram. She didn't have a lot of experience with it, but in Angelica and uh, myself met with her. We had a good, you know, meeting uh, prior to this, prior to going live. And, you know, she's, she wanted to give it a try and, and we had a great session. I think that was one of our best sessions with the transfer resource center. We had a lot of information and she said after that, she had a lot of, she really enjoyed doing it. Uh, she, she would love to do it again. And she felt comfortable as, you know, as we were doing the session, as the session was progressing. So you might get a little bit, people hesitant at first, but I think once you kind of roll out the process with them and discuss the expectations and get them comfortable with their account set up, and you know how the session is going to really go. I think people will start to ease up and really say, you know what, they'll kind of ease into it, and you know adapt to it. And I think that's what's been happening with our. I'm noticing with our, uh, with uh, people in across the board at Queensborough Community College. So uh, and growing confidence in using social media. Uh, so staff already balancing many commitments. Yes, we have a lot of uh, you know busy people in our department and other departments across the board. So obviously that comes with, you know, people making time to do this, uh, you know, pro making, making this, you know, a priority, you know, obviously we, you know, Angelica does the communication and reaches out to all the various departments, uh, letting them know way in advance. So they do have time to, you know, recruit and get someone from their area to ask around. So we're, you know, we're letting all the departments know in advance about these sessions. We're planning it out. Uh, Angelica and, my, and myself meet in advance and kind of map out these sessions when we know we're gonna, you know, tackle each each area, each department. So it gives, you know, us time to reach out to people we wanna to present to, to, for them to kind of uh, gather who they wanna, you know, get. So we are, we are giving uh, all the support services plenty of advance notice about these Instagram live sessions that we're gonna be conducting. Uh, so time, so monitoring platform does take time. Uh, Time requirements to monitor student feedback. So, like, uh, like I, like I said, I'm really the maitre d, if you will, the host of these sessions. I'm just making sure that everything is going smoothly, and uh, you know, kind of, it, and it's not always easy because I'm really trying to. I'm wearing a few different hats. So, obviously, how it starts, I go in there, I greet everybody, I say good afternoon, I say welcome to this session. Uh, 
and I'm in there. And then I just do a little bit of a background, what we're going to be discussing. And I said, you know, and I kind of, kind of say in a few now, in a couple of minutes, we're going to be joined by uh, Jeremy from Financial Aid, for example. And that's when I look, I, I look for their, that person's username and I, then they join in. And then I have uh, my co my co my presenter with me. But at the same time, you know, we're getting a lot of students that are joining in live uh, during this session. So uh, with that comes a lot, a lot of questions. So for example, you know, I'm answering the questions and also at the same time, kind of looking at the screen and kind of monitoring the questions that are coming in live from the students. So I'm, I'm trying to really, I'm, my job is to really make sure that conducting the session with the presenter and also making sure that the students' questions aren't being, that, are, that are, are, be, are being regarded as well. So it's kind of going back and forth and making sure it's running smoothly and make sure the presenter is, is comfortable with, with the flow and also kind of feeling the questions from the students. So, uh, and making sure the students are actually connecting well with the topic and asking, and asking the appropriate questions with the session. And we know our students, sometimes they get a little bit off track and uh, tend to veer off a little bit. So if we're having a discussion about academic advisement, we can get a ton of questions about asking about financial aid because they feel that, you know, they can, you know, sometimes uh, we know how our students are. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, if that if that does happen, uh, you know, I'll simply say that, you know, I will, at the time I'm able to write, I can write the email address for financial aid uh, in the comments and just say, if you have any specific financial aid questions, here's the email address for financial aid, and we will be doing a financial aid session coming up in the near future. So I want to really, the, the whole idea is to really keep the students on topic of the, of the session that we're doing, but at the same time also address specific uh, concerns as well. You know, if students ask are asking other questions too, we have a, we have a great uh, email address called ask at qcc.cuny.edu, which really kind of can answer questions across the board. So a lot of times there's something that I'll also, I'll also type that in the session too, if I'm seeing like a wide variety of questions during the session and it's hard for me to address that. I do, I really do my best to address all the questions during the live session, you know, but if I see that sometimes we're getting a little bit off topic, uh, it's always good to throw that email address in there so students can then, you know, after the session, use that and, you know, have their questions being met by, you know, sending an email to that, to that email address. And it's been working out great for us too. Now we're going to go a little bit into implement and assessment here. Yep. So, so uh, thanks. Delicate, so, right. I'll um I'll talk a little bit about just some tips, and this is just coming from, um, you know where we started, and of course we've done this a few times now, so we definitely have some tips for you. Um, start small, just just start, you know, um, have a few people. Um, I know in the chat, I, I was answering a couple of uh, in, uh, people were asking, um, you know, how, who runs the QCC Instagram page? Do you use your own Instagram? Do, um, you know, do advisors have their own account? Every college does this a little differently. At QCC, we really try to just have everything come from our main Instagram account and our main social media in general, whether that's our Twitter, you know, our Facebook, et cetera, LinkedIn. So um, when we started small, it was really a joint uh, project between um, student affairs, enrollment management, specifically uh, Mike's department, and then marketing communications. Um, and I was the point person for that. Um, all of our vice presidents were really on board, um, you know, our VP of marketing communications, so that was a great idea. So did our VP of student affairs, uh, our Dean of enrollment management. So they were aware, but we kept the implementation very, very small. So um, uh, like in previous slides, it was myself, Scott and Mike and a very small team of advisors. And then we grew it out um, after we had done it a couple of times and we had um, some sessions to show for it um, and kind of were able to iron out a, a business plan or just a plan in general. So one thing um, I would say is invest in a good smartphone. Um, like I had mentioned, we use our own phones. Um, I have a iPhone 11. Scott has, a, I think, an iPhone. I don't know which. Same thing. Android. Yeah, iPhone 11 as well. Yep. Yeah, iPhone 11. Great. So we both have 
you know, good quality phones for this. You do need good video quality, good audio quality, good internet connection. Um, <laughs> I realize not everyone is able to do that. Um, so if, if you're having these conversations on your own campus, um, if you're not, you know, able to use your phone, speak with, you know, the higher ups, maybe purchasing and, and, and see if this is something you, you know, can get like a, a cell phone or, you know, we, we, we use our cell phones. Um, we don't use a laptop. We won't use an iPad. This is just kind of our process. So we're sharing what, what we do. Um, and then assign early on who is responsible for what. So when we started, we had a really good plan. Um, you know, I was taking care of the marketing, the, you know, the behind the scenes stuff. And, and Scott was really building the content, thinking about, you know, who we should be incorporating in sessions, the content itself, where to go. Um, and then we all worked as a team to, to just grow it. Um, so then I would say create an onboarding program. So Scott talked a little bit about this and I'm gonna go into some more um, detail. So onboarding begins with a Zoom call to better understand the needs um, and how advisement can work with them to host a successful session. So right now, everything we do um, kind of stems from advisement. We're always putting advisement as the face of the campaign. Um, and it's right now, just anyone else, any other department who wants to participate is gonna be a co-host and they'll do the session together. Um, as we grow that, you know, maybe that may change. We're, we're still kind of really focused on having advisement front and center. It's for our students, it's really important for them to hear from advisement in general, be able to see a face, you know, um, just have that sort of connection while we're off campus. Um, and then after our meeting, like we said, we have a Zoom meeting. Um, Scott mentioned this. Um, so we're sent a word, uh, we send them a word doc, which we can share with you. So it's a one sheeter, it has some directions and it has a few links to help um, people visualize this process because it's, it's kind of hard to put the pieces together without visualizing it. So there's some good links on that. And like I said, we'll, we'll share it. Um, Mike, next slide, data and analytics. So um, Right now, you can look at uh, insights. If you go live, you can see your own insights, views, likes, comments, shares, saves, um, which is kind of depicted in this image. Um, sessions regarding registration, bursts are financial aid. Those are the ones that usually have the highest interaction we've found, which makes the most sense. Um, and then we use this data when onboarding. We're able to show people like, hey, this is working. Um, we know you're, you might be a little hesitant, but um, let's show you, you know, previous sessions and let's show you some data and, and then we go from there. Um, and then we utilize live feedback from students to assess and adjust their program. So um, early on, we noticed Scott was getting slammed with financial aid questions. So um, we decided we are going to need someone from financial aid to join in on these sessions. And we were able to take that live feedback um, and bring it to our Dean of Enrollment Management. And we were able to get um, Jeremy kind of on board from financial aid. So that's just one way, always be in tune, do those postmortems and figure out what the students are really wanting and asking for. Um, and we're working on our own assessment and we're trying to tighten things up too as a, as a team. So Scott, back to you for next steps and future planning. Yeah. But I, I'm going to yeah, sure. wrap it up yeah, because sure, I do sure. want to leave a little time for questions. Um, so if you don't mind, um, Angelica, thank you. And Angelica is right. You know, assessment is tricky too with this because, you know, when students are logging in or logging on and they have all interesting, you know, handle names of their social media, you can't really necessarily identify a student by ID or, you know, um, email address from CUNY. So um, to say survey day, let's post session. Um, we haven't really done that, but we're looking to figure out better ways to do that. Um, but, you know, we're going to continue to get that feedback, um, get more services on Instagram live with us, uh, as, as Scott mentioned, and Angelica mentioned counseling and career, I, I believe you're they're meeting uh, with us this week to kind of get that moving. Um, Instagram is creating something called Live Room, which actually might expand more than just two people being live at one time. So that actually might be really helpful for us uh, for the future if we want to include several people in one session. Um, right now, we can just do the two together and we kind of cue them in. 
And of course, grow the number of followers and re-engage them as they return to campus, right? Because, you know, in some form in the fall, we will be back a little bit, uh, fingers crossed. And, you know, we can continue some of the stuff we did to grow those followers and market to students. Um, lastly, uh, as a thank you and for time for questions, but just, you know, when we were in person, we did some of those on the spot advising sessions, as I mentioned, that's Scott on the left and one of our first film sessions on campus for Instagram Live is up the upper right there. Um, and we also did a lot with uh, the backdrops, our, our um, mascot to get students to follow us on Instagram. We had a lot of events where marketing would represent, we would have a booth, people would take pictures, you know, with our Instagram booth and really to get them to follow. Um, we would have events where they would have to get stamps. So one of the tables were follow us on Instagram and, you know, they can then, you know, complete their, their tasks. So that was a great way to grow our, our viewership or followers. Um, but I think we'll leave it open uh, for some questions now. I think the best way is if you want to write it in the chat um, or if you want to raise your hand, um, I know Kathy will help here, but and you can unmute yourself and call on us if there are any questions at all. Um, I think we had addressed a few that were in the uh, chat room already. Uh, one of them was that everything goes through our marketing department. Um, and that's sort of one way we, we centralize this. Advising doesn't have their own Instagram and have to monitor that themselves. It kind of has one uh, complete uh, account on campus that we can sort of monitor and control uh, in a way that we're able to keep on, on, on top of everything. So um, that's one way in which we do this. And we're, we're fortunate that we work so closely together. Um, any questions anyone has um, or anything? Uh, comments that you wanted us to address. All right, now we're close to 220. Thank you. I don't see any questions at the moment. I know there were a couple of documents. Some people asked about the PowerPoint, the recording. Um, the advising summit committee will make sure to catalog all of this. Um, and we'll, uh, I know, have the recording, we'll have our PowerPoint, and including the one page uh, that we were, ha were going to have, which is the onboarding uh, tips. So if you have specific tips, which I think I may be able to uh, share on here, I'll try. I uploaded Instagram Live instructions in the uh, chat box right now. Um, I didn't realize I have that capability, so there you go. Um, and then I believe all the PowerPoints will be uploaded. So um, thank you all. I don't see any hands or questions, uh, but we appreciate uh, all the positive feedback. Um, and I, I know we have a great rest of the conference uh, at 2.30. Uh, make sure to check your links in the webpage. Um, please don't forget to tune in at the end of the closings on each day. Um, we have some special things planned for the conference. So um, we're really excited about that. Um, thank you all. Thank you for all the feedback. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, any questions? We didn't put, I didn't put our emails or contact information, I realize, um, but I'll put it in the box right now for mine. Um, we'll just put one in there. Any questions you have, uh, I will be able to share with you. I mean, here we go. Let me just write my contact information. It's mverdino at qcc.cuny.edu. Um, and I may have not shared the file to everyone. So I will, uh, there we go. So thank you so much. I'll leave this open for a few minutes um, in case you wanna copy down any contact information. Um, but otherwise, thank you all so much. And Angelica Scott, our, our gracious hosts. Thank <laughs> uh, you. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of the conference.